Hello and welcome to another Waters and Stanton video. My name is Peter Waters, G3OJV, and I'm glad you could join me. Today I'm going to talk about a new product, but it's a, a British made product. You know, if you go back over the years, there was quite a few ham radio manufacturers, but today there's far fewer. I can think back and uh, Think of uh, KW Electronics, uh, Lab Gear, Microwave Modules, SEM, uh, Withers, TW Withers made um, transceivers, VHF transceivers, some very nice uh, gear as well. And I'm sure some others, or Eddystone, Eddystone Radio. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I've got a 1961 call book and uh, there's an advert inside, I'm going to put it up on the screen now. There's an advert inside for the Eddystone 888A. And that was a ham band only receiver. Very well respected. Sold for £110 then. And uh, in today's money that would be around about £2,300 or so. I'm not so sure how that compares now because it was a hand band only receiver, just the HF bands, but it, it was band spread right across the dial. Oh, I can remember as a C youngster thinking, gosh, I've done one of those, but it's way out of my pocket. Um, but of course, that were in the days when um, transmitters and receivers were separate items, so it was quite common to have a separate receiver. And in fact, I think very often the receivers, particularly the, the uh, Eddystone receivers, are far better than the um, the war surplus uh, receivers that were being used uh, uh, in those early days. But there we are. So I'm going to talk about um, a new antenna. It's made by Innov Antennas, uh, run by Justin Johnson. And uh, he's produced a wide range of uh, antennas, um, originally for VHF, UHF bands, but more recently for HF. But he's produced um, a uh, fairly low cost, fairly lightweight 77s antenna. Um, it's uh, 21 elements for 70s. And um, Mike, Mike Devereaux, G3 SED, has uh, volunteered to put a prototype together to uh, demonstrate to you how it all goes together and to find out how well it works. So, we're going to take a trip from Essex down to Portsmouth in a flash to see Mike in his back garden. I say back garden in quotation marks. So, Mike, it's over to you. Hi, I'm Mike G3SED and today I'm going to put together a 21 element 77 beam from Innov Antennas. Uh, Innov, of course, is Justin G0KSC's uh, company. Justin's very well known for his um, LFA designs. I think it's really revolutionized uh, the HF bands and six meters with antennas that really cut the noise down. So this is the uh, 70 sem aerial. I've just got it out of the box. I can see that he's supplied um, the cable with the ballon already made, which is nice, uh, an end type already on there. Boom material looks really good. There's a bracket over here, all the parts I need for that. I can see the elements here that are labelled, which is good, so it should be easy to put together. And I can see the boom connectors there. So the best thing is, let's get started and put it together. So here we are, I've put the boom together. There are two joints, one here, and then there's a small section at the back here, uh, added on. And now if we go up to the back of the antenna here, I'm just starting to assemble the driven element, the loop per uh, driven element, with these uh, tubes going each end, and then the ballon will go on there and, and come away at right angles. It's very important that, that the um, coax comes away at right angles and round there. So we'll finish off the driven element, and then I'll put in the other elements. And they're all here, I've laid them out, they're all labelled. Um, so let's see how long this takes us to put together.
So the driven elements all assembled. Um, it's got marks on it at the moment uh, for where it should be, but what we'll do later on is we'll adjust that. These clamps here are not over tight, so I can still adjust that for a final adjustment, but it should be pretty well on the ball. I've got a quite a few of the elements in, as you can see, and I'll just show you what you do to put uh, the elements in. I quite like this system, it's very easy. So there's just a friction fit there, you just give it a push, hold the other side, then just push the element through up to where the black marks are. Just look on the other side, job done. Now what I'll do just to make sure they're secure is we'll put a dove of um, rubber seal or something else just to make sure they don't move, but they're pretty, pretty tight. So let's get on and get the rest done. It's about an hour, I suppose, to put it all together. Um, went together really easily. There was just one small hiccup for me and I didn't explain it uh, just now when I was talking about these elements. They, they, when I said you push them through there is a small plastic um, insert there that's got a, a retaining lug on it and they push in and that um, is holding the element in. So uh, just to make that clear, and as you can see now what I've done, I've just treated it with a little bit of rubber seal. So the only issue was this element joint here. I had a slight problem with this one where you've got um, an extension inside to strengthen the boom. Um, but apart from that, it, it was really easy to put together. It's, it's so light, that's the other thing that uh, amazes me. So next thing is to get it up on the tower. Um, it's gonna go up there. Um, probably just below that two meter beam and I'll have to organize uh, um, masthead preamp as well <clears throat> so uh, let's get to it lower the tower get this thing up there and see how it works so the aerials on the tower now ready to go up this is a bit I hate actually because I don't have a motorized tower so I have to crank it myself but uh, let's have a look at it at the antenna So here it is on the tower. I've put it on a three inch stud mast, which is a little bit big really. Uh, it's because I normally have my big HF antennas on it. Um, and if we come down to the bottom, to the driven element here, <clears throat> uh, you can see that there are adjustments here. It, when the antenna comes, it's already marked, ready to go. But you can fine adjust it on each side and then clamp up these clips. In fairness, this is a prototype that uh, Justin sent me to try. Um, I've had a few issues with the SWR, I'll have to be honest with you, and um, Justin is going to send me a slightly longer reflector for this one. Um, but already, even with it at 12 feet, I did some tests yesterday, and I was hearing the Dutch beacon, and I was also hearing a GB3 UHF, which from here is about 70, 80 kilometers, the UHF. So I'm hopeful. Um, so now I've got the hard work to go and crank it up and we'll, uh, we'll go see what we can hear once it's up in the air. So uh, we've come inside now having put the aerial up. That was a bit of a job, I can tell you. Um, I've just checked the SWR. It's about 1.3 to 1. Um, in the meantime, if you remember, I said that uh, Justin was going to send a replacement element, which he's done. Um, but I, in all honesty, I haven't had a chance to fit it. Um, but I'm sure that will bring that SWR down to 1 to 1. Um, so I thought we'd have a quick look on the band and see uh, if we can get any uh, stations. CQ, CQ, G3, S, E, D, Golf 3, Sierra, Echo, Delta, calling CQ 70 and listening. M0, VMX. Yeah, hi Mark, uh, M0, VMX, G3, S, E, D. Just testing a new antenna, Mark. Um, would appreciate a report and... Um, how uh, how you think you're receiving me, break? Uh, G3 SCD M0 VMX, we are very, very loud, Mike. You're, uh, you're 25 to 30 over 9. Uh, absolutely brilliant signal from yourself. Uh, G3 SCD. Yeah, G0 VMX, G, uh, sorry, M0 VMX, G3 SCD. Oh, that's great news, Mark. Um, yeah, you're about the same. You're nearly 30 over 9. M0 VMX, G3 SCD. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'll do a few more tests with you later on with front to back and things like that, but I just uh, wanted to quickly um, see that it's all right. I'm just looking at the SWR, which is about 1.3 to 1, so I'm happy with that. 
Well, that's that's pretty pleasing. Um, Mark lives about eight miles away, I suppose. So I mean, he's quite close. Um, what I did do just before that, I had a quick look and I could hear the um, beacon in Holland. I could hear a new beacon up in Leicester, GB3 LEU, um, which is about 120 kilometers away. So it's, it's looking good. Um, quite pleased with it. I like the aerial, it's lightweight. Um, it was pretty easy to put together. And as I said, given that it's a, a first prototype of a new series for Minov, um, a little tweak with the elements was uh, was always going to be on the card. So um, very pleased with that. I think um, if you're looking for a sort of portable aerial or for something going out uh, on field day, or even as I've done up on the tower, um, I think it'll uh, it'll be a, a winner. So there we are. See you again soon. Well, thanks very much, Mike, for that uh, test of the uh, Inov 21 Element 70 Sims antenna. It just shows you what you can work. When you've got a 70 or 80 foot tower in your back garden and 21 elements. But uh, no, it's uh, nice to actually um, show a British made product. And uh, that is a prototype. So it's not currently available, um, but I think it'll be available fairly shortly. Uh, but certainly a very interesting product. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can imagine uh, Mike, uh, um, having to wind that tower up and down. I, I'm not sure that everybody feels sorry for you, Mike, about winding that top tower up and down, but uh, perhaps a few do anyway. <laughs> there we are. That's the um, uh, in off uh, 21 element 70 SEMS antenna. Well, by the way, one of my other tasks um, uh, while I'm uh, being locked down here is to put together the uh, local church uh, video for the services every Sunday. And I also was um, asked to put together a, um, a short video for the kids uh, for um, viewing while they're at, they're at home. So um, I'll put a link to that site at the bottom of this, uh, this video channel. Now for my, for my part, I'm uh, operating in the sort of somewhat more humble conditions and an environment. I've got a five element uh, diamond two meter Yagi on a telescopic mast, which is only around about 15 or 18 feet high, I guess, at the moment. And um, I've been uh, experimenting with FT8. Well, I think if you follow this channel, you'll know that I've been trying FT8 out and uh, managed to get my Mac computer to talk directly into the back of the uh, IC9700. And I've been operating at a 10 watt level, and it's quite interesting. I can't say that um, I really am hooked on FT8, but it is fascinating <coughs> to see how far you can work on very low power. Um, I've been operating at 10 watts, um, so I've got the power on the IC9700 turned well down, but just to see what I can work on 10 watts. And um, I was quite pleased a couple of nights ago to work into Northern Ireland, which from this QTH is a distance of uh, 335 miles, or I think it was. So I was quite pleased to make that contact. And I've worked uh, one or two stations um, uh, in, uh, in Europe, like uh, Holland and uh, Germany. Nothing really exotic, but it's, it's interesting. But it, <laughs> FTA does seem to lack that personal, con well, in fact, there's no personal contact at all. It's just data, uh, but interesting nevertheless. Anyway, thank you for watching this uh, channel. I do appreciate you uh, tuning in and catching up with us here at Waters and Stanton. Uh, don't forget, we're fully operational at Portsmouth. Uh, we've got um, a warehouse full of goodies. And uh, if you're thinking of buying something or you need some advice, whether it's, uh, you don't, don't know which item to buy or whether it's suitable, then give us a call on the phone and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try and guide you through it. Because we all are um, fully operational um, and very experienced <laughs> hams as well. Um, I was trying to add up the number of years that Mike and I together have been on the air. It's over a century, yeah, well over a century. Anyway, there we are. Thanks for watching this channel. Keep in touch. Remember, keep safe. If you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button so you know what's coming up. And until the next time, take care. Bye. <laughs>
Thank you.